Greetings, ladies and gentle readers. I'm Dwyer, and I just finished reading Quest Academy Silvers. Uh, well, I didn't just finish reading it, but I've been looking forward to doing this review. I actually just finished reading a really, really bad book, and I just finished ranting about that one, so that's probably on my channel, too. This one, I'm happy to say I actually enjoyed. I mean, the hint was right here. 1,700 reviews. And you got full five star. That's pretty good. That's actually pretty good. But I wasn't sure. Wasn't sure. It was. It looked like it was a little bit hit or miss. And it was brought to my attention that it's a bit wish fulfilling. So that made me nervous. And true enough, it is it is a little bit wish fulfilling. No, that that's actually true. This book has a little bit of wish fulfillment, but I still enjoyed it, and I will be reading this book again. I enjoyed it that much. From Brian J. Norden, who even has his picture apparently right here on the Amazon. Sorry, I'm not set up for you to see. It's fine to say it's there. He's got like a little thing. So he's putting his money where his mouth is, like, hey, here, this is me. I'm not hiding behind a uh, some kind of handle. So no one really knows it's me writing these things. Which is usually an indication that you don't really trust your writing. He clearly does, and he has every, every reason to. Story in a nutshell, what is it? Well, world is beset by demons, don't you know? overlap their world bit of a demon world they kind of uh touch a little bit and that gives essentially earth magic the the overlap there is giving is essentially is putting magic into the human world which is which is great uh, unfortunately it does mean they have to hide in little enclaves and traveling is dangerous because they're beset by, you know, demons having claimed most of the rest of the planet and trying to wipe them from existence. So some danger there. Some danger there. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Now, why is it a little bit wish fulfilling is the main character gets really, really, really strong. Long story short, and I think it even says here in the description, it d wait, d mm? okay, it says his power might be the one to tip the odds in humanity's favor, giving you an idea that, yeah, this guy is really, really strong. But it's not because he's like a frontline fighter or whatever, it's because he's a crafter. Okay, he's not, he can fight? He doesn't, he's not his, he's not his go-to? Okay. So how do you make a story where the main character doesn't really want to fight and he kind of just wants to craft interesting into being a five-star on Amazon sort of book with over 1,700 ratings? How do you do that? It's because he's really good at world building. It's because... The characters feel unique. The conversations aren't just people monologuing at each other like I just finished reading with Path of Ascension. Like, yeah, he does what he does well. So even this is was interesting because I wanted to know more about the world. I wanted to know uh, I was I was interested in the characters. Um the author threw some setbacks at the character, so you want to see how they're going to overcome it. It, uh, like, I, I keep referring to the book that I literally just finished ranting about, but the stark differences are insane. Because in this book, I want to say no more than three months passed at best. At best, only three months passed. And I want to say maybe not even that much time. Though I think maybe it's three months. Maybe it's three months. I think I, I want to say it's three months. Compared to the piece of garbage that I literally just read, where over ten years pass and nothing happens and nothing's developed. You contrast that with this, with very little amount of time uh, passes, but more is actually done. 
it, it, does it even compare? Uh, okay, 700 pages, a little bit more. It, admittedly, admittedly, it's a little bit longer. Sure, it's, it's a little bit longer. But still, it's night and day. So much more is done. There's more character development. It's, it's just all around a much, much, much better read. Quest Academy Silvers, I am giving this man a follow so I know when the next book is coming out. I am very interested in that because I'm looking forward to seeing how this continues. Just like the previous book that I absolutely hated, he's also got a pretty strong uh, skill that would make people want to either kill him or kill for it. And as a result, again, unlike the last book... Yeah, he doesn't go around, like, telling everybody. Because that'd be bad. Yeah, it turns out he understand. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be good, so he's kind of got to keep it on the down low. Otherwise, bad things could happen to him. So, in the event someone does find out, there's more tension there. Because something he doesn't want people to, he doesn't want to get out. Right? Makes sense. Ugh. Like, yeah, I, I can't sing his praises enough. It, it just, this just became one of my favorites. It's become one of my favorites. I don't think he has it in him to screw up the rest of this series like the other guy did. So I'm looking forward to his next book. Brian J. Norden definitely has a fan with me. That is for sure. Very rare, there's no two stars. You can't really see that, can you? Suffice it to say, you can see the 0% right here on your screen. There's always going to be some people who don't like you for some reason or another. Uh, I was really into it until the author felt the need to bring transgenderism into the story? What the? Oh yeah, I think I think one of the characters like went by they or something. It okay, whatever. So yeah, that guy is just a crazy person and completely by himself in the whole one starring thing. No two stars, very few three stars. So you could totally get that. This is a much better, well written story here. So, just quick, I'm going to spoil almost none of this in my quote-unquote spoiler section. Uh, but what happens in this book is pretty straightforward. Main character, he can see the power in other people. Like, everyone has their abilities, and he can kind of, like, see that and kind of mimic it. So he's, he's a bit of a mimic. But the author isn't stupid because that could get out of control really, really fast, and then you'll not really be interested in what's going on with the main character. So there's a drawback to it. You can't just, like, take anybody's power willy-nilly and copy it into yourself because if your body isn't ready for, like, someone who can, like, lift up five tons and you're like, ha-ha-ha, now I can. Snap, now my arms are gone. Because I, I literally just did something that I my body was not prepared for. It's not a quite, not a quite apples-to-apples apples comparison right there, but you get the idea. So that kind of thing, no good. Anything that requires a lot of extra training, for example, to utilize well, he doesn't have that, so if he actually tried to do it, it would go bad for him and he could explode. So the things that he does wind up copying are like are a bit smaller, a bit smaller things. Like, I can now move faster now. Not the end of the world, he's not like flying off buildings or whatever. Um, getting glimpses into the future because someone's got some precog abilities. What really captures his attention, because his parents are uh, auctioneers, I guess, and so they're ve he's very familiar with you know uh, equipment and what have you. Is he finds a crafter copies their ability to be able to essentially see things. That something that could be built or improved upon. Now, when he takes it for himself, there's a little bit of a kerfuffle and something goes awry. 
and that ability goes through the roof and imprints into him so it's permanent. So now he's able to build things that no one else can do as long as he has the help to do it. Like he doesn't have the raw power to like instantly make a complete army or armory of the best gear anyone's ever seen. That would require a lot of power. He ain't got that. And require a lot of other parts that he can't just manufacture out of thin air. Like there's always like a drawback or a cost to what's going on in the book. Unlike other things I could name. Not talking about that though. In this one, because it's done well, there's always a cost or a drawback. So if he's going to do something, it's at the cost of something else. If he wants to do something, it has a price tag attached to it. So how he's going to negotiate that, get around that, create that, also all the while keeping what he can do very, very quiet. Because if people found out that like a legendary item can be created or whatever from this guy, they'd either put a bullet in his head or they'd kidnap him. So they just made, you know, them all the things. And then they'd probably put a bullet in his head. So gotta, gotta, gotta keep it little shh. Don't, don't tell anyone. So that was, that was fantastic. And the side characters uh, come into their own in this one as well. There are so many good side characters in this one. Like he's got like a little bit of a love interest in here that I'm not really interested in, uh, to be fair. He's got a friend with the precog abilities. They're pretty cool. They're fleshed out. They feel like their own character. They're responsible for stopping insane amounts of tragedies all over the world because they can see it happen. So that's pretty cool. Um, the crafter whose ability, you know, he kind of yeets. Even they're pretty cool. I like it. Um... There are people actively working behind the scenes to feel like the world exists outside of the main character. Something you don't always see in a lot of, like, below-tier writing. Like, when the main characters aren't around, it feels like nothing actually exists except in this really cartoonish, evil villain sort of way. It's not what you're getting here in the slightest. Everyone clearly has their own interests. They clearly have their own drives. You believe that these characters are making the act, the the actions they're making for the reasons you've already been given, and not because the uh, author is like reaching down and forcing things to actually occur, which is what you always look for in good writing. I'm leaving that one there. Suffice to say, yeah, pick up a, uh, Quest Academy of Silvers. It is a little RPG, but you can see it's standing on its... What's well, a little RPG? Yeah, it's, it's mostly lit RPG. That's also another one. Th they're not going overboard with like, okay, now this person gets this skill and this skill and that skill and this one and that one and this one and this one and there's this stat and this stat and this stat and this stat and they're all going up and down and over here and doing all these things to the point where it's just meaningless and you don't really care what's happening anymore. There's like a few things and you care when the character improves at what they're doing. Because they're not overwhelming you with a whole bunch of like useless stuff that has no meaning to the story. You're only given the things that are meaningful to the story, the ability to be seen on the page and tracked. No useless garbage. You're not going to have, oh, what's this character's uh jump skill at now hey what's their eating skill at like holy god mm, i can't believe some people actually include that stuff in their books i mean obviously they do it just to pad the length obviously they do it to pad the length this one's 700 pages but without the filler padding garbage you see in so many other lit rpgs i love it go get yourself a copy if you like lit rpgs or anything that I've said here. Yeah, Quest Academy Silvers. Can't wait for the next one.